the way to the new trap line. I gotta pull all the sets today for the cats. <laughs> Always kind of a shit day when you gotta do that, but well, hopefully there's a couple cats in there, or one at least, um, or some action. And then, uh, but early this morning, I had to leave pretty early. It's cold out, really, really cold out. It's minus, when I left the house, it was minus 18 Celsius. I'm going through Ashcroft right now and it's only about minus six, minus seven. But uh, it's gonna be cold tonight. I enjoy that though. And uh, meeting fellow trapper Tim James, super great guy. Um, he's gonna get me some wolf bait, some bait for wolves, I guess. Probably the best way to put it. And uh, since I had wolves move into the new line, that's exciting. Like I, I think I told you whether you've seen the video or not. Uh, I've never been able to trap wolves. I don't. I've never had them um, in my areas. Um, I had one wolf come through a region two trap line that I had one time. Just ran right across the, the trap line. Never stopped. And that was it. That was the the extent of it I had uh, you know I've seen tracks on the Tunkwa Lake line um, right at the end of the season in fact the last day when I was pulling coyote sets I saw what looked like three or four wolves that ran across a lake but that's all I've ever you know that's I can't really consider that a crack at at wolves so I'm gonna grab this bait and I got uh, bunch of brand new snares I made and I made a I did make another video some of the guys in my local region here are uh, are kind of new to snaring so I made a, a snaring video and I'm gonna add to it with some components that sort of thing and I'll, I'll post that up it'll just be a quick little video a little five minute video on what I do for coyotes and wolves um, and I'm no specialist by any stretch on my own, but I have a lot of really great snaring friends. Um, you know, the, the Alberta Army. Gary Gottberson. <laughs> he hates it when I call him Gottberson. Gary Gottberson and uh, Marty Seneca. I've used, utilized both those guys. Um, two good friends of mine and uh, just full of information and quite honestly, like, spilling over to share it so especially that uh that marty guy you can't shut him up once you start him talking so <laughs> i uh i'll go through what i do for snares uh with the two-piece system the anchor and the, the coyote snare i think i'm gonna do the same thing for wolves we'll see and uh that's it for this morning <laughs> on the way up to the main trap line, the new trap line, and pull the sets for the cats and put up some snares for some wolves. Just got loaded up and uh, uh, I had a friend come, Tim James, what a what a beauty. I uh, told him I had found the wolves and I had a little bit of bait I was gonna throw around for him and stuff and set some more snares and well, next thing I know, he offered to meet me at my at the trap line here and this morning and drop off some bait. And I thought, okay, that'd be great. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry about the camera. I'm trying to arrange my sleeve. So just got done with Tim James. I wish I would have got him on camera, but he's gonna come out trapping with me for a couple days here pretty soon. And uh here's the bait he dropped for me. So <laughs> I got one full sleigh ready to go. Moose and Scraps and another probably 400 pounds that I got to come back for in probably two or three loads. Oh, at least probably three or four loads. Oh, that's it. I got probably three bait sets right there for, for wolves. That's the fun stuff for me. All right, well, let's get to it. It's gonna be a long day, long couple days. I'm gonna spend the night tonight and get going. So I'll take you with me. Well, just dropped some bait on the wolf set and uh, 
you know, squirrels are abundant this year and I've been pretty frustrated not being able to actually catch any squirrels and with, I've caught a few, but they've been eaten by Martin or Fisher, or even a cat, I'm not sure. But uh, look at this, finally. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, little feller. I don't mean to laugh, but I got one. Look how great that is. Perfect catch. Let's see, he got a little greedy with the peanut butter. Frozen solid. Nice squirrel. Thank you. All right, we'll carry on. Ah, okay, so what I've done is I've basically driven where I've set. I've got uh, four or five sets on this, this road here. I ended it. This is where I got that wolf or cougar in this set. So I'm just gonna go run in and check it. And I'll check them one at a time here. Doesn't look like anything's been hanging around. Goose is still up. Nothing's touched it. Like one, two, three. Oh, snares look up, at least from what I can see. And that's it, I'll take this down and move on to the next one. We got a, I was able to see all the, well, some of the boxes on the way in, not all of them, but some of them. And uh, I got snares behind them and stuff, but I did notice that one of the, one of the conda bears is out of the box. So fingers crossed, we got something a couple miles down the road here. We'll go back and check it. I've got a cat box right there. You can see the wing hanging in the tree right there. Wing moves just a little bit. I can see the trap still in it. This is the trap that I actually caught uh, a bobcat in already and didn't recover it. I don't know, something must have eaten it. You can see the tracks here. First tracks looks like coyote. Fresh coyote tracks going around the backside, which is nice. I got a couple snares back there. Check it out together. See what's happened. Uh, nothing glaring. Staring out, staring at me. But you see tracks went right in, followed. That coyote must have looked at that and wants to eat it. A hungry fella. Just didn't, wouldn't go in. Didn't like the look of something. So. Alright, well I'll take this all down and Snares are still up, both snares still up. Okay, I'll take it down and save it for next year. Well, I guess I could have fenced it a little bit better, that coyote, as you can see. Yeah, I don't know why that's sticking out so far there. Things change with snow melt and that sort of thing, but you can see a coyote walk straight there, straight through it, right beside it. It's done, that snare should be sitting right here somewhere should be sitting right about there and fenced on the other side so anyway came close didn't get them so the first thing I notice is uh, the wings gone and then you can see there's a trap missing out of the box so we're gonna discover this one together I guess uh, I don't see any tracks I like to see the track coming in. I don't see it. Oh, I do see it. Oh, I see something. Oh, yeah. Oh, what a gronk. That's one heck of a big lynx. Holy. Look. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, man. That makes my whole day. Golly, that's a beauty. That's got to be the biggest lynx I've seen in jeez for for a long long time see, he's frozen on he's frozen but got himself around the stick pretty good oh he's heavy the length is real heavy look at that look at this guy so he's got some color to him but what a gorgeous gorgeous animal Alrighty, well I'm going to leave him in the trap of course and yahoo! Well, like I said, that makes my day. Now, here's the interesting thing. It's too bad the season's over because I see the wing back there all chewed up. 
nothing left of feathers. I'll bet you anything that's another lynx that uh, eat that. But, oh, awesome, fantastic. That makes my day. Okay, look at that Gronk. Look at that Gronk, linebacker. Yeah. Beautiful, love it. Oh, thank you, Mr. Lynx. He's, he's not as silver as some, but I'm not gonna complain at all. I'm not gonna complain. He's still pretty frozen, won't be green bellied. Oh, just love him. Thank you. All right, let me carry on. it was a martin track there all of a sudden for a minute which they closed today too so it wouldn't matter but it'd be nice to know they're here lots of rabbits around that's good oh i'm just tickled about that lynx this is the set here that i actually thought was going to pay i really did i don't know it's like the area i like this little hole on this road a little hole that all sorts of tracks here holy macaroni it is all sorts of tracks and I really thought maybe it just wasn't enough attractant. I got that wing up there, but that's about it. And uh, nothing snuck in the back, nothing snuck in the side. But, oh well, didn't pay this year. We'll get them next year. Here's that, uh, here's that fun set there that I, we did with, I did with Miranda there. Miss Miranda, she made the tea. Well, I punched that one in real quick and I'm pretty sure that one would pay off. Give it another week. But for now it'll just feed the feed the lynx or bobcats. And that tree right there is gonna be mine next year. During the summer I'll come back for that one for firewood. That's a beautiful fur. Woo! I'll take it. Alright, and get this one out. This set here is that one that uh I had the oversized trap in a 220 box, a 280 in a 220 box, but and I can't see any. It doesn't look like the trap set off. I don't see any tracks around. Squirrels, squirrels, lots of squirrels. All right, well, that's that for this line. I think I've checked just about everything. I had pretty high hopes for that snare right there, actually. The box is sitting right here. But I had high hopes for that snare for a coyote. And set it just a touch high, just in case Mr. Wolf decided to show up. But, oh well, that's a good one. Pretty happy with it. I'll, uh, I'll reset it next year, but I'll use an actual 280 box. Or both, so 220 and a 280. Okay, well, that's probably it. I've got four or five more sets that I gotta pick up, but um, yeah, I just spotted something in the bush. This is fun. Oh, look at this Martin box. Well, maybe not. Maybe a Fisher box. It's pretty big for a Martin box. The trapper before me had the same idea in here. over here good deal well, dumped out no trap in it but at least I don't have to bring a box in here next year that's good I don't know how it didn't burn fire was right here I just didn't quite get to here that's cool okay well I don't know put it somewhere where I can find it again I don't see any flag tape up so underneath this burned log and so I'll have 
two boxes in here. Good deal. Kind of fun. That's uh, that's one of the fun things about when you get a new line. You know, other people have trapped it in the past. But it's a good box too. Nothing wrong with that. Other people have trapped it in the past, and you can find where they've been. Sometimes there's little treasures. All right, well that's it. I'm gonna get out of here. Head back to the tent, start a fire, and then uh, go make a bait run. That's nice to see. Big old cow moose. Lots of babies, have lots of calves. that's been burned or logged or One of the neat things here, um, this this particular trap line that I purchased, and I'm starting to learn, this road that I'm on, this particular road, anyone who's kind of a history buff will dig this, but uh, this is the old Caribou Road, uh, the, the road that used to go into the gold fields in Barkerville. In fact, the uh, Barkerville is named after a guy named Billy Barker, and I bet you Billy Barker... Uh, walked up and down this road a half a dozen times maybe more or took a horse or stagecoach or whatever was going on at the time maybe pack mule you know judge bagby and caribou cameron and all the all the crazy gold rushers that uh that came in for the uh, british columbia gold rush before they before the big rush up in the yukon after the california rush so I believe it was in the late 50s, 1850s. So the 49ers came from San Francisco and California north and from around the world, I guess. Kind of fun. And there's about, I don't know, 10 clicks or 10 kilometers of this trail or this road that I can, I can utilize. My trap line's only on this side here, this side here is the next trap line over until we come to a T at another road down at the bottom. Kind of fun. I've decided to put a bait set in. As you can see, it's getting some... That was a wolf scat. Two or three coyotes have come back and scraped up and did their own business on top of it. You can see one even today. 
one, maybe two were in today on top of the old wolf tracks. So I imagine the coyotes are following the wolves around, trying to clean up scraps of any kills. Uh, I've shown you this corral before, anyone who's watched the channel. Excuse me. So there's two lakes in here. There's one tiny little lake right in here. And then out in the back over here, there's a bigger, bigger, much bigger lake. And the wolves crossed here four, four or five different places for the next kilometer, a couple clicks. So what I've done is I dropped my my skimmer there and I drove in here just to see, see what it was like. Just make sure there wasn't four feet of powder or sugar that get me stuck. And it seemed to go in no problem, of course. I can see grass, so it's I didn't think it was gonna be a problem, but I'm gonna go and put I'm gonna put a bait set right in this tree line edge right here. Since the coy since the coyotes and wolves are running down the road and ducking in and out all over the place, they should be able to find that no problem. And then I can hang snares all around it. All around here. I might just throw it out right out here. Right out here in the middle somewhere and then I'll hang snares out in here and hang snares out in here and then I'll come back and I'll look for trails let me set them but I'll try to blind set them first and we'll go from there that'll be it for tonight and I'll head back to the tent well it got a little dark on me so time to make my way back to the wall tent but this will be it I got some bait over here big piles of real stinky stuff a couple piles over here and I went one two three four five snares out that's all i could get out before it got dark in the tree line um i'm gonna have to get out another four or five in this tree line tomorrow yeah so there it is okay back to the tent well it's a pretty good day pretty good day on the new trap line that's uh what a I think it was an 11 or a 12 day soak on some of those sets and only a only a seven day soak on on a lot of others so you know I just wanted to get to get to know the line a little bit this year um I'm gonna go out tomorrow I'm gonna put some more bait out I'm gonna put out for the wolves as well but uh no need to drag you guys along with that I'll uh I'll have three wolf baits in by tomorrow afternoon and then i'll make my way home and check out those beaver and otter sets and uh get on with my week at work and uh next week i've got to go to vancouver island so that's gonna be it but just a just a fantastic day i'm i'm just stoked about that length set that, that makes me happy so that's two cats off this line, even though I only recovered one. Um, possibly a wolf. It seems like everyone thinks that was a wolf that got out of the snare or broke out. Um, could have been an over overcrimped breakaway or just twisted out of a 285 as a coyote. Like maybe it was a coyote that just... Oh, just seems really strange that a canine would stick his head in that, in that set. But oh well. You know what? We'll never know. And, uh, yeah, just feels great. I'm in the tent. I've got the fire going. It's, uh, feeling, feeling pretty homey now. I got, uh, got lots of light. Um, in fact, I got lights I haven't even turned on. Big roll, high roller here. <laughs> Uh, like I said, I'll go set some more baits for wolves tomorrow, and uh, I'll come back in a week or so. Hopefully we'll have some uh, long-toothed furry critters hanging from steel. You guys take care. Make sure to like and subscribe. We've got a long way to go here. It's going to be a couple years. Uh, before I get this line figured out, I've barely touched it. I mean, I've I've touched... 20%, 10% of this line. And I've got a long way to go. So I've got to find a spot to put a cabin. I've got to get the approval for the cabin. And then we got to build the cabin. And that's where, that's going to be fun. That's going to be fun as heck. I can't wait for it. In the meantime, we'll just keep learning more and more about the, the area. And I can't wait for next year 
put up some Martin boxes and uh, got mink down on the river and of course beaver everywhere and muskrats everywhere. We still got those to come yet too. I got uh, probably about 2,000 beaver on this line. I could I could take care of if I really wanted to, but they say the price of beaver is coming back and uh, getting to be worthwhile trapping them again, especially with the, the price on caster. Caster's now going for, well, $100 a pound. And uh, I like I like the spring beavers for that. You get the bigger caster out of them. Um, around home, I take care of a bunch of beaver. Early in the year, uh, nuisance beavers that plugging up the spillways for the farmers, that sort of thing. But uh, that's it, guys. Hey, thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Um, I'll get Miss Miranda on a little bit more. Uh, I know she's she's quite popular, and I wish I had the brown dog here, miss her. But uh, we'll catch you guys soon. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye.